morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you for asking. Can you, can you state your name and NDOC number for the record? My name is Nevin Perils, NDOC yeah. number 229870. Thank you, Mr. Perils. My name is Commissioner Bailey. You also have hearing representative Kinjera here. We're going to conduct your mandatory parole hearing on KC 19-343-9111, count two of burglary and count one of grand larceny of a firearm. You have a sentence structure of 24 months to 96 months. Your uh, PED is, uh, well, your PED is passed. Your NPR is 11-21-2023, and you expire this case 5-24-2024. No holds or detainers. The only hold that I see is the notify hold. Is that correct, case worker Mullet? All of that information is correct. All right, thank you. Sir, on the screen, you should see an advisement or rights form. Just let us know if you see that document and if you can tell if that's your signature on there and if you understand your rights today. Um, I can't see your signature. The screen's messed up, but I know I see my name though, and that's my handwriting. All right, so you signed it on July 21st, 2023, uh, notifying of you of this hearing. Are you fully prepared to go forward? Yes, ma'am. All right, let's go forward. By doing so, I want to ask you, do you have an opening statement? But I'm hearing you have uh, visitors there. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Who do you have there in the room? My father and his fiance. Father. Yeah. Okay. All right. So at one point uh, in this hearing, one of them will be able to speak on your behalf. Okay. Okay. All right. Do you have an opening statement? Anything you want us to know? I would just like to start off by apologizing to the parole board um, for my last appearance. Um, I just, just to be frank, I, I came in um, just trying to give you guys, tell you guys what you want to hear instead of what the real of the situation was and how I really felt and what, what was uh, my plans and goals upon my release. So I came in there lying to you guys and I just wanted to apologize before I, before I begin my statement. Um, but. I don't, please pardon me if, if my cadence fluctuates, I'm extremely nervous. Um, I, I, uh, I've had some time for the, for the past four years almost to uh, really soul search and find myself. Um, and I know that what I did was my choice. It was my, it was my mess up. Um, I made the conscious decision to do the things that I did. Um, I can't blame anybody. I can't blame any circumstance. All I can say is that I made the choice to do the things that I did, and I want to apologize to my victims, their families. And uh, just a few months ago, I experienced the exact same thing that I was doing to people on the streets, stealing from them, breaking into their houses, taking cars, and my mother's car got stolen. So that kind of gave me a sense of empathy, um, put myself in their shoes to understand how they really felt um, because I was extremely, I was extremely upset, extremely upset. And, and I know that that's how I made those families feel. I know that that's how um, I, I, I basically contaminated the society. I contaminated my neighborhood. Um, I, was, I was more of a destruction than a reconstruction. And I know now at, at, at almost 23 year, three years old that the course of my life, the course that I want to take is not prison. The, the things that I want to do in life don't consist, don't have anything to do with the parole, don't have anything to do with the prison system. Um, I, have an ex, I have an extremely supportive family. I have an extremely supportive um, group of friends that I have now been able to bond with being in prison, um, uh, uh, talking to certain people that are out there that, that are doing the right things instead of the wrong. Because if you want to be the best football player, you don't hang out with a bunch of a good basketball players. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just I just want to apologize to my family uh, as well. I want to apologize to my father. Um, I want to apologize to my mother, who unfortunately couldn't make it. But those are those who deserve, on top of my victims, 
my sincerest of apologies because those are the people that I truly affected. Um, I don't want to I don't want to sit here and talk until I'm black and blue and make it seem like I'm this changed man and oh I'm coming in here and this is this and this is that. No, I just want to be real. I want to let you guys know that these are these 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 years have really shown me who I am, who my family is, who the people I've been hanging around are, and what I really want out of life. Now, as as far as what I want to do with myself, because these are questions that are being asked. Okay, you you committed these crimes, you've done this. How are you going to get back to your community? I'm gonna break the cycle. I'm not gonna keep being a, 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 a repetitive offender. I'm not going to. Um, I'm not gonna revert back to the same things. I can't. I can't afford to do it. I've lost too much time, money, emotion, family members, friends. And I just don't see this worth it at all. So now what am I doing to get myself out of here? I've, uh, I've had the opportunity to start a business since I've been in prison. I can even come down to the numbers on <laughs> what I'm gonna make annually if you would like me to. Um, I, I, it's called Walla Beauty and Cosmetics. It's a cosmetology shop. That's one of my passions is uh, cosmetology. I like art. I'm very good at drawing. I'm a musician. <laughs> And you know I, I can I can uh I can do I can do better. I know I can. I know I can. And I know I will. Um, but I don't want to talk too long. I want to talk you guys' ear off. I just want to let you know and be frank with you guys. I appreciate this opportunity for me to represent myself. And uh, yeah, thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you for your statement. It seems pretty sincere. What I like to do is just go over your parole risk assessment. Before I do so, we saw you last year, um, October 2021. And what did we tell you to do? To stay out of trouble. Did you? Um, I, I got some write-ups and I take full accountability for that. Okay, so you didn't. So you didn't stay out of trouble, which is, it's not okay, but it's a small indication to us that if someone tells you to do something, for your own freedom, you do it. And it, and also, if you are granted parole, if your your officer tells you to do something, you probably won't do it. That's just, it's just common sense. We told you to stay out of trouble, you didn't. We give you parole, your officer tells you to do something, you won't. Just, that's been your whole life. You know, you, you have a, a horrible juvenile record, and I'm sure people were telling you to th do things. The judge was telling you to do things. They were giving you all kind of chances and you just said whatever and did what you want. But it sounds like you understand. I don't I don't know if this prison uh, term will deter you in the future. It sounds like you you have matured a little bit. But let's go over your parole risk assessment. Um, the only thing that we really need to concern ourselves with is the fact that is it, do we think that it's safe to put you back in the community? You know, the first time you came, we denied you because you just was out of control. You didn't learn yet, but let's see if this, if it works for you this time. You were 19 years or younger when you were first arrested. You do have a prior parole um, and probation revocation. You were not employed full time prior to this incident event, the full 12 months, but you were employed nine months prior to, so we'll consider that. Uh, you do have property offenses, lots of them. You have a history, some use, but no severe disrupt disruption of functioning when it comes to drugs and or alcohol. Is drugs going to be a problem for you if you're granted parole? No, Okay. No, you, are, you are a male. You have no prior felony convictions. This is your first one. And um, hopefully it's your last. You're 22 years old. You're not a gang member. You have done no programming. Um, probably because you've been in trouble the whole time. You can't, you couldn't stay out of trouble. Uh, and you're currently in medium custody. You have a total score of a 12, which is a moderate, re a moderate risk to reoffend. Again, um, the only thing that we have to consider is if it's a good idea to put you back in the community. Um, and maybe an incentive for you to stay out of trouble is that this is your mandatory parole. Um, if you was to go out there and commit another uh, felony or convicted of another felony while you're on parole on this case, any good time credits that you have earned on this case are no longer good time credits and you will not be able to have the opportunity to parole on this case again. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. 
So the, the good thing to do for you is to stay out of trouble if you are granted parole. Okay. Um, who wants to, does your dad want to speak on your behalf? Yes, ma'am. All right. Come on sure. up, sir. All right. Is this fine? You can you can, you can sit down. Go ahead. State your name and your relationship, and why do you think your son deserves parole? Austin Harris. I'm his father, and um, you know we've been really bonding over the phone, uh, just talking about a lot of things. Uh, I know that uh, his childhood wasn't easy. You know me being. Uh, Divorced from his mother, uh, raising him as a single dad up until he was about 15. And, um, you know, he, he, he had some hard knocks, but uh, we, we have some of that stuff out on the phone. And, uh, and I'm just really proud that my son can have those conversations with me and, uh, and just to see his growth. Um, I, I think he has some wisdom that he can have before. Um, I, and I do think his experience here, especially in this prison, has really changed him. He called me up a couple times and, and was just like, I don't want this life anymore. I don't want this. And so um, we're just glad to see him making plans, you know, talking to me about what he's going to do. These businesses, he does have an entrepreneurial spirit. He is a great artist and uh, and uh, a, a great singer. And I, I want to see him, you know, use that, do those things, keep you out of out of the trouble. You know, when you don't have something to do, you know, you're gonna get yourself in trouble. And so, um, yeah, I just think he's ready. I think it's time, and I, and I can't wait to see him the other side of this and see his victories and not the failure. Yeah. Hey, no. hey, frozen. Is it frozen? Yeah. Oh. Can you guys hear us? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir, for your comments. Appreciate it. Yes. Uh, let's go back to him. The other way. Go the other way. There you go. There you go. All right. There now you you're go. On. <laughs> Got a question for you, young man. You've been in the system since you were 15 years old. When are you going to learn? You were given numerous opportunities from the juvenile court. Were you not? You were in Spring Mountain Youth Camp. You were on youth parole. Who was your parole officer? Do you remember? Um, my my parole officer in juvenile parole was uh, I I don't remember her name. No, I don't. I know my probation officer was Officer Strahan. Now tell me, did you you were a Springmont Youth Camp? Were you in Caliente or Elko or some of you? I was at Springmont Youth Camp, Caliente Youth Center, and some of you. So tell me, what's different now? What have you learned the difference between juvenile and adult? When I was a juvenile, I always thought it was going to be a slap on the wrist. I thought I could do anything I wanted to. I thought I was invincible. I had no regard for anybody's feelings. Um, now I see how serious this can get being around lifers um, in my first prison term. Knowing, knowing the reality of this situation, knowing the things that I'm accustomed to, the meals that I'm going to eat, the situations and, and, and searches that I'm going to experience aren't juvenile. This is adult. I make, I make a mistake, I, I get years of my life taken away rather than months. Um, I feel like what was different for me that, that really clicked was the fact that now that I'm an adult, now that I am an adult, excuse me, I'm not just, it's not, it's not just my family, oh, it's my family that's hurt, I'm hurting myself now. I didn't care as a you know. I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't care. I care now though, because I have things to lose. 
Let, let me ask you this. If you had a conversation with Judge Boy right now, what would you tell him? What, what could he have done that have prepared you or kept you out of prison? Is there anything he could have done for you? Let me ask you this, too. You heard from the commissioner saying that if you get paroled on your mandatory parole date, and if you commit another felony, you're going to lose all your good time. So think, do you really want to take that chance? Do you want out? Yes, sir. And you're going to, and if you don't comply, and if you don't comply, you pick up another charge, you're going to lose all this good time and start all over. Yes, sir, I understand completely. Okay, that's it. Okay, listen, it's always sad to see someone like yourself who's in prison, who made the wrong choices when you were a kid. You had parents, they told you what to do, you didn't listen, you were your own person, there's nobody fault but your own. Now you're in this predicament to where you lost your freedom. You have a felony now. You're 22 years old. But the reality is life is really not over for you. It's just beginning because you're only 22. Everything is up to you. The choices you make. The choices you make will determine where you go in life. If you have all these great talents and you decide to waste them, that's all on you. Nobody's fault but your own. So if you are given parole, it will behoove you to ensure that you do whatever that that officer tells you to do as an adult. You're not a kid anymore. And if I was you, I would read my parole agreement a lot. Read it every day. And whatever it tells you to do, whatever you sign your name to do, you should do it. If it tells you not to do something, don't do it. It's very simple. If you complicate it, that's on you. You understand? you have anything else you want to say? No, I just want to thank you guys for your time and consideration. All right. It's important you know that the safety of the victim, the victim's family, and the general public will be considered before any parole or false judgment release decision is made and if release is granted. The same will be considered in fixing your release conditions. It's going to take four out of the seven commissioners to say yes or no to this grant. Contact your caseworker in about two weeks for the results of this hearing. So his parole was granted in August of 2023. And when he got out in January of 2024, he committed another crime, which was attempted murder of his ex-girlfriend, him and his friend. And this happened um, in Las Vegas. So I have a news reporting um, that would explain everything that happened. And being that he was out on parole, um, as you know, he has to go back and serve the remainder of his um, prison sentence, along with the new felony that he just received. Um, it is very unfortunate because, um, as you know, Eli State Prison is one of the worst prisons in Nevada. And so there is a lot of alleged corruption in that prison. So I don't know why anyone would want to voluntarily go back. Um, if you watch his parole hearing, he seemed very remorseful. And uh, like I said, it's just unfortunate. So here in the article, it talks about how Peros was arrested on January 19th and um, he was denied bail due to being on parole. However, his friend was let out on a $150,000 bond. Investigators, these men, 25-year-old Aaron Johnson and 23-year-old Nevin Paros, charged with attempted murder. Metro Police say they shot at several people in an Uber, hurting one. It happened back in January after leaving the South Point Casino. Police later determined Paros was an ex-boyfriend of one of the women in that group. Johnson and Prowess faced charges of assault with a deadly weapon, attempted murder, and battery. Thanks for watching. I'll be sure to follow along with this story for any updates. Be sure to subscribe and like this video.